guys welcome back to my channel so since game of thrones is live i've been listening and watching a lot of game of thrones commentary most of which is incredibly negative <laughs> one of the comments that i keep hearing to the point where it's almost like in the zeitgeist is that game of thrones is now a soap opera but since i'm not a middle-aged housewife i don't actually know what makes a soap opera different from any regular drama or any other form of TV. So today I'm going to investigate whether Game of Thrones is in fact now a soap opera. Have my internet. So I typed into DuckDuckGo, what is a soap opera? <laughs> I got a few, a few sources up. We'll start with the Wikipedia one. According to Wikipedia, a crucial element that defines the soap opera is the open-ended serial nature of the narrative, with stories spanning several episodes. I guess that just sounds like a regular TV show to me. One of the defining features that makes a television program a soap opera is that form of television that works with a continuous open narrative. Each episode ends with the promise that the storyline is to be continued into another episode. Okay, so maybe the open narrative part, like there's no real end in sight. So there's no real planned third act for the series as a whole. It's just anything to keep it going. That's what I'm gathering from it. I got another source here. A soap opera is a form of serial drama which is characterized by very cliche plots, themes, and situations. In addition, a soap opera has a continuous narrative and a large complex cast of characters. They're mostly left with cliffhanger episode endings. Now that we're in the final season of Game of Thrones, we're looking for a narrative that's going to be tied up and satisfyingly concluded. Not super open-ended, not for the majority of them, not for the main storylines, where I think a soap opera just doesn't care. It doesn't really sound like there are main storylines. There's just a lot of storylines and anything that they can throw out there to keep those storylines going, they're gonna do. So I can kind of see how now that we're in the final episodes, it's maybe starting to feel like that because how are they possibly going to conclude any of this? Oh, but they're also set in familiar domestic interiors with only occasional excursions into new locations. Okay, that's interesting. I need to set this down. I think part of the fun and part of the joy of Game of Thrones was the fact that we were constantly going to new locations between like Winterfell, River Run, King's Landing, Dorne, um, across the Narrow Sea. We could be in like 12 different locations within the span of one episode. And then for really special episodes like Hard Home, it would take place in mostly one location that gave the situation a certain amount of weight to it. And I think now we have spent the majority of this season in one location, mainly in like one castle, mainly in like a few sets of rooms, mostly just talking. <laughs> that definitely sounds like it's pretty soap opera-esque where it's just like all these different characters having these like really over the top interpersonal conflicts and they just kind of dramatize it to each other in one room and then in another room and then back to the same room. So soap narratives are marked by chance happenings, coincidences, missed meetings, sudden conversations, <laughs> last minute rescues and revelations, and deus ex machinas. Well, Yep, I think that's what made the Game of Thrones first, first like four or five seasons so special is that yes, there were kind of these fantastical and like larger than life elements to the story, but the way the characters met each other or dealt with their conflicts felt realistic or at least plausible and usually clever. I think that's something that really marks George R. R. Martin's writing, especially his dialogue between characters, there is some like magical or mystical elements here or there and they tend to be very dramatic like Danny's dragons hatching and that was like a season finale moment because it was so um, unusual compared to the more political atmosphere 
that the rest of the show kind of takes up. The entire Longest Night episode was a giant god dual x dual x machina the gods being the stupid showrunners for not <laughs> killing any characters off that should have blatantly been killed off and for having Arya be so ridiculously overpowered and able to kill the night king in one stab that is in every soap in every scene there is a fireplace in the background and a tote of wine <laughs> so Romance, secret relationships, extramarital affairs, and genuine hate have been the basis for many soap opera storylines, blah blah blah. Previously unknown children, siblings, and twins, including the evil variety of established characters, often emerge to upset the set of relationships examined by the series. Well, we've obviously got a quite a bit of that going on, especially previously unknown, not quite siblings, but relatives who are also lovers <laughs> now listen a lot of these elements are also in the the good early parts of game of thrones and are also in george r, r. martin's books so i don't think that having these elements in the story inherently make them a soap opera i think what makes something kind of soapy kind of trashy is the way it's executed. Does it feel rushed? Does it feel contrived? Does it feel like these very dramatic elements are coming out of nowhere? That there's no hints towards it? That there's no momentum building up to these big reveals? That they're just happening to shock you and particularly to shock you towards the end of the episode so you feel like you need to keep going and watch the next episode to see what happens. I think last episode was extremely guilty of that. I already mentioned how everybody's just talking to each other in like the same three rooms. I think Danny's dragon getting shot at was pretty ridiculous, came out of nowhere, especially once you see the weaponry and how Euron managed to surprise them. And though the dragons are the one in the air, a lot of the audience is starting to feel that the writers don't know where they're going and they don't have a set plan. And so they're just kind of throwing the craziest stuff at us in hopes that something will excite us enough to keep our interest. And I think a lot of this is in consequence of this season being cut down to six episodes, which is pretty absurd. Honestly, I think we probably should have gotten one more season. So we had nine instead of eight, all with 10 episodes. And then obviously none of this would be as big of an issue if George R. R. Martin finished his books so that they had the source material to work off of like they did for the first five seasons. When they're left to their own devices, and the amount of time that they generally have to tell an arc or a story is cut. I think they just stopped trying. Now they're just hoping that the spectacle and the shock value will be enough, which is a shame because it's not good for the show, it's not good for the fans, it's not good for these characters that we've all, I think, grown to really love and appreciate. And they're kind of being treated, yeah, like, these like stock characters. They're making decisions that feel like they're not coming from the character themselves, but like somebody needs them to say these things or do these things for plot purposes, or not even worse than that, just for drama, just to cause issues. Shocking the audience and causing a spectacle is more important than actual character development or true character decisions and interactions and the drama that could naturally happen from that. Which I think is what was so brilliant about the early episodes of Game of Thrones is that they didn't feel like you had to hit us with everything to keep our attention. The story was interesting enough and the characters were compelling enough to keep us moving forward. You didn't have to shoot a dragon out of the sky from an ambush and then shoot like a thousand arrows at the remaining dragon who miraculously misses it just because you think like your audience isn't going to care if something more slow or methodical is presented. So yes, 
in a lot of ways, I think Game of Thrones this season, particularly after episode three, has kind of turned into a very high production soap opera, which is obviously a shame and a shadow and a bit of a mockery of its former self. But we still have two episodes left, so we'll see if maybe it can redeem itself on some level or if it's gonna go down as a joke. That's all I have to say on the matter. Please leave your comments down below if you also think it's the soap opera or if you have any other gripes or issues with the show itself. Even though it seems to be kind of falling apart, I still love talking about it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys next time. Bye.